Okay, it's me, Jory Peak, running on Hollywood Balls. A happy new year, first show of the year. So it's only right we have our very special friend and guest on because uh, it's a very special day uh, this weekend. The FA Cup. Uh, the magic of round three would have it as it's thrown up Super Kev against Jordy Pete. Uh, the last time the tune triumphed over the Gooners was way back in 1952. Let that sink in. Uh, Big George Robledo, one of the famous brothers, he got the winner six minutes from time. So FA Cup weekend, welcome Super Kevin Campbell. Jordy Pete, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, everybody watching and everybody who loves the FA Cup. What a weekend we got. What a fantastic time. There's some great ties and obviously the magic of the cup is such a well-used phrase. Uh, get, get that hashtag in this weekend. No doubt it will be. Uh, fast forward to 2021 though, Kevin. But the FA Cup, it must bring back some happy memories for you. Uh, actually, Pete, loads of memories when you think of the FA Cup. You know, my, my favourite FA Cup, I think we've done that before, yeah. was Arsenal against Manchester United in 1978-79 season. Mm. That was my favourite. Arsenal were 2-0 up and then uh, Man United, Gordon McQueen scored, then Sammy McIlroy, then Arsenal went up the other end and Alan Sunderland scored. Got, got me out of the house, Pete. I ran out of the house. Me and my mates were, were celebrating, uh, which was great. But, it, you know, as a player, to, to actually play in it and get to the final and win is actually really amazing. It still is. I still love this competition. And, uh, well, it's the best club cup competition in the world, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's still fantastic. It is, and, uh, you know, we know that football has changed. I mean, the, the world's changing, and, and it still is. But, you know, the real magic, what was the what was that real magic of the FA Cup day? I mean, a full for a fan, you know, a full day in front of the, t the TV. Uh, and that's what people the world over tuned into, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I mean, Pete, when you, when you think about it, you could plan your day because you knew, right, the players are going to be getting on the coach at such and such a time. You're going to see all the build-up. You're going to see the wives getting on their coach. You're going to, yeah. you know, you could plan your day out perfectly. And uh, it, was a, it was something that everybody looked forward to, whether your team was in the final or not. Let's be honest. Yeah. So that magic of the cup, because it goes all the way from grassroots and non-league, etc., all the way up to the final, you know, it's, it's, it still has that appeal for me, Pete. It really does. Um, as a player as well, I mean, you played um, in the final, Chef Wed 93. As fans now, we all we, we know how amazing the days that you just described. I mean, you know, you used to spend all your day in, in your pyjamas if you wanted, waiting for the question of sports special, uh, as you say, the, the, the walking on the pitch. But from a player's perspective, you know, what, what are the sort of emotions that you go through on the big day? Well, it's crazy because we, we played Sheffield Wednesday that year. We played Sheffield Wednesday in the League Cup and FA Cup. Yeah. We beat them in the League Cup. We drew the first game in the FA Cup. And then we, had, we replayed them in midweek, Pete. So we played in two FA Cup finals in about a stretch of about five, six days. It was amazing. <laughs> Look, it, it still is an emotional game, obviously, mm. especially with the fans there. You know, it's, so it's kind of a one-off. It's you against them, the opposition, and you want to get it done. You know them Wembley steps are still famous. As a kid, you dream of walking up them steps, feet, yeah. getting the hat or getting the scarf on and being at the top and lifting the cup. So, you know, it's, it's, it's you against them. And the way we won it with Andy Linegan scoring late on in the, in the final... Was actually was was amazing, mate. It really was amazing. So I'm proud. I'm so proud to have said that I've been part of a FA Cup winning side uh, for Arsenal. And you know, I really look forward to the competition. Arsenal obviously are the record holders. Yeah. And they just won it again last back in the last season. So you know, Newcastle are playing the holders. So hopefully we could turf you out. But probably we'll get onto that, um, my you're speaking of FA Cup memories, my only Wembley memory of an FA Cup final, um, my first one, uh, was 98. I was actually living in London at the time, funnily enough. I was living in Batsea and um, 
I never knew to this day, funnily enough, I'm going to I, I ask you, you, you love your music. You were singing before you came on air. Um, uh, we, we must get you to do that more often, I think. But did you know that Sting wrote the cup final song for the tune, uh, imaginatively named A Black and White Army? Um, that was probably as good as it got for our day that day in 98. <laughs> Listen, I knew, I, I did know that Sting wrote it. Um, <laughs> I did know that because I remember watching the game. And all the build-up, and obviously that was there in the build-up. You were probably at Wembley, Pete, with I was. the lads, weren't you? Exactly, yeah. you were probably at Wembley with the lads, so you weren't really bothered, you were there. But I was watching the game, and um, yeah, that, that did come up in the build-up. But look, you, you, do, you know it's on the day, uh, Pete. You, you can turn up, and you can have a blinding day, and the opposition could have a bad day, and you end up winning the cup. We've seen it happen with Wigan. Yeah. Man City, haven't we? So, you know, you just never know what could happen, and that's the beauty of the cup. It is. So, uh, back to the now, then, and hopefully, the beauty of the cup is that Arsenal don't turn up over the weekend. I can't see it because they do seem to be um, back on track, don't they? Um, it looks like it, it, it's starting to turn around. Well, I don't want to say it's fully turned around yet, Pete. Until no, we, no, until we until you win quite a few more games, I suppose. But there have been signs of life, which is very important. And the, the, the ones who have brought the life, Pete, are the youngsters. Yep. The young players have come in. Martinelli, Saka, who's been, who's been the jewel in the crown so far this season, and Emil Smith-Rowe. These kids have been the, the blazing a trail, really lifting the experienced players when it really should be the opposite way around. So, Mikel Arteta, you know, he's got some young talent there that are proving themselves that they can do it. I'm not so sure whether we're actually going to see him this weekend, Pete, because I think he's got some players who he needs to give game time to. So it might be a bit of a mixed bag. It might be a bit of a shuffle of the pack. But whoever turns out, Pete, it's going to be a tough game. It'll be a tough game. but And I said, funnily enough, one of our listeners, a big shout out to Andy, Andy Briggs, who's in Australia and, and watches us all the time. And he, he sent us a message yesterday and it was a very good point. He said he hoped that Newcastle would do similar and maybe play some of the fringe players and the youngsters because there's some exciting ones coming through. And with Newcastle sort of, you know, where they are in the league, you would say looking relatively safe, although you never know. Um, it could be a good opportunity to 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 blood some youngsters because it, it is a game where Arsenal are going to be overwhelming favourites. Yeah, sometimes, Pete, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Yeah. Right? Because, fair enough, giving kids a chance in the cup competitions is great. Don't get me wrong. But you know what the Toon Army are like, Pete. Yeah. The Toon Army are going to say, this is a cup competition. We want to have a cup run. We want to go to the final, et cetera, et cetera. We don't care if we're playing Arsenal. Play your best team. So, you know, Steve Bruce is damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. So, listen, whatever he chooses to do is going to be the right decision. And, you know, it's one of them and it made the best team win. OK, uh, predictions then. Home win? Home win, mate, Definitely. OK, I'll go for a, uh, a narrow, tough, fought home win. Uh, I think Newcastle will score, but I think Arsenal will just have too much firepower. And the dream will be over again in the third round as we move swiftly on. Uh, there's some other games that have, have stood out um, to, uh, to us here at Hollywood Balls. Uh, one of your old clubs as well going along nicely. Everton play Rotherham. Now, I said at the start of the season I was fascinated how well Everton were doing and although that slipped away they're still playing well do you think the Cup's a good um, avenue for them to get some glory? Yeah I think that's I think that's really the main glory uh, position but I think it, you know look Everton again it's what Everton turn up Pete I'll be honest with you yeah. Everton we've seen can blow anybody away we've seen that in the past few weeks and then, you know, they play West Ham at home and they're awful. And West Ham come away with a 1-0 win. But I expect them to beat Rotherham, I must say. Um, I'm sure Rotherham are going to give it a right goal. And uh, no disrespect to them. Everton will be favourites. But, you know, Everton, is, the cup competitions gives a team who aren't so consistent an opportunity to, to do something because you really get up for these FA Cup games. It's a one-off, isn't it? It's... 
you know, it, it, it is a cliche, but it could be, it could be their, um, it could be their final. It's a big day against a big club, um, at a famous old ground. Supporters or not, it, it's a great opportunity for 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 the players of Rotherham. Oh, it's, listen again. To take a scalp of a big boy, you usually see it in the FA Cup, don't you? This is where the big shots happen. And if look, if Rotherham beat Everton. It's not it wouldn't be such a big shot, but it'll be a great shot in the arm for Rotherham as a football club. That's for sure. So you know you wish them well, but obviously I've got me blue out on, then I so you I have. want Everton to win. And another hat you might have on because this game stood out to me because it's um, uh, you know East Midlands Leicester going very well, but they won't fancy that visit to Stoke. It look, it's going to be a tough game. Stoke have been defending very well. I think the Stoke's problem has been scoring goals. Um, yep. They're finding that pretty difficult at the minute. So, again, it depends who Michael O'Neill, he's got to shuffle the pack. He's got to give some maybe fringe players a goal, possibly. And uh, Leicester will probably do the same. Um, you know, it's it's well within Brendan Rodgers' rights to give some of the fringe players a game because they hardly ever get a chance to, to get a game. So... You know, to, to keep everybody sharp, this might be the time where they take a chance. But I think as, if Stoke are going to have any chance, they're going to have to be able to score maybe one or two goals, probably two goals against this Leicester side. Uh, and I think you, you you hit the nail on the head there. But Brendan Rodgers was bemoaning before the Newcastle game about how many games his players had to play. So I do expect there to be quite a few changes in that one. Um, Manchester United, <laughs> they're running out of cups, aren't they? Um, they're at home to Watford. And again, you know, I'd probably put the mockers on them, but I really fancied them in the League Cup against it. Yeah, I, I, I did fancy them. And of course, they, they didn't show up. So it's becoming a bit of a, a habit for them uh, in, in the Cup. So they've got to take this one seriously, haven't they? Starting with Watford. Yeah, I, I think Man United have been unfortunate that Manchester City really started to hit a little bit of form. Yes. And, you know, they've, they've that, that Kevin De Bruyne is something else, isn't he? You know, he's oh. unbelievable. He's, he's, he's a world, world-class star. And they come up against a good City side who, you know, you know what they're like. When they hit a bit of form, they can beat anybody. But I, I expect Manchester United to beat Watford. I, I know Watford are, are, ain't bad, but I expect Manchester United to have far too much firepower. Um, Oli, will he shuffle the pack? You could see him shuffling the pack, but, I mean, they've got a, such a big and strong squad. Huge. The quality doesn't diminish if he changes it, so... I expect Manchester United to win this one. OK. Um, Crawley, great day for them in, in store. They've got Leeds United, who just can't stay out of the news at the moment. Everyone's got an opinion on Leeds United, haven't they? Um, should they be more, um, you know, precarious Pragma in their play? Pragmatic. They? Yeah, pragmatic. Yeah, yeah. Pragmatic. Do, everyone's using that with, with, with Leeds. Or do they just keep going at it? Um, I can see that... They, they won't change for Crawley, I'm sure, but um, they should win that. But a game they might not fancy. Well, they're going to have to fancy it because Crawley are going to be up for it, Pete. You know that. But I expect I expect Leeds to, to win this game. They, look, Leeds have just come into the Premier League uh, for probably nearly half a season now. They're used to, they're used to playing teams that they're, they're the big club. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it may, may be at a lower at a lower division. So their, their attitude's going to be right. Bielsa, they usually have the right attitude whichever game they go into. It doesn't always work out for them. And at the top division, we know you can turn up and the top boys can, can, can beat the brakes off you like, you know. So I, I expect them to win and uh, I expect to, to, them to fight fire with fire because Crawley can have a right goal. Uh, just staying with Leeds just for a second, because next up in the Hollywood Ball studio after you, we've got Tony DiRigo, and we're going to be talking about Leeds. What's your take on them? I, I like the way they play. Um, it, listen, it's not for everybody, because you know you leave yourself open to, when you're playing against some of these top sides, the quality side, they really can open you up, Pete, and it, you could be on the end of some wrong score lines. Yeah. But the key, whether we like it or not, the key is to stay in the Premier League. And you've got to win games to stay in the Premier League. And if we're honest with it, Leeds are winning games. They are going out and winning games. The attitude is right. They're going out to try and win every game. And sometimes it's not going to work out. But the attitude and the way the club is built by Bielsa, 
I think it's a breath of fresh air. I really do. I think he's good. But they will be on the end of some wrongings. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, speaking of wrongings, <laughs> for you, <laughs> Marine versus Spurs. Come on, Marine! <laughs> come on! <laughs> now, listen, what a day. Now, this is, this epitomises the FA Cup. There's a window cleaner playing. There's a pub landlord at centre-half uh, uh, against Jose's boys. What a day for them. Uh, again, this is what the FA Cup's all about. It's about a giant, giant killing. I've been part of a giant killing beat against Wrexham uh, for Arsenal. And it's not nice, let me tell you. You're winning the game, you're cruising. And, they, and then they took me off and then we ended up losing beat. I'll tell you, absolute nightmare. Why did you take me off? Anyway, look, what, what, a, what a great, great opportunity for Marine to play against Spurs. Yep. Yeah, obviously, Spurs are going to be favourites. Of course they are. And will Jose Marino, will he shuffle the pack? He probably will do because he, he can afford to. They've just got to a final midweek and he can rest some players. So he might shuffle the, black, the pack and it might just give Marine a little light that, you know, they can get a result. But this is what the FA Cup's all about. You know, the David against Goliath. And of course, you know, as, as you know, Kev, because you're, you're heavily involved in it on the Hollywood Ball social media, we've got a couple of Spurs fans who, who, who politely um, point out to you every week, uh, Mick Maguire being one up in the north of England, and Daniel Alcon was on yesterday uh, from over in Asia. So hello, boys. Um, I know that Kev won't be backing you, but um, I think given, given the task of Marine, it's going to be a Spurs win. Yeah, look, I, I don't even want to say it, but yeah, it's looking that way. They're favourites, Pete. But you know what? I would love Marine to do it 2-1. But I would love Spurs to score first and Marine to win 2-1. But unfortunately, I think Spurs are going to win this game. And I think Newcastle fans would agree with you because then if that happens, maybe, maybe they could change the credits on match of the day and we wouldn't have to see Ronnie Radford scoring against Newcastle again. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Pete, you're talking about legendary Roddy Radford goal. What a, what, a, what a strike, what a super goal. And that, that's, that's history, Pete. And listen, they should, they should show it twice, Pete. They I think they do. Twice. I think they <laughs> do. Get in there. They should show it three times, Pete. <laughs> listen, it is the magic of the FA Cup. And on Twitter today, it's been absolutely going mad with our... Um, with our, our football app family, uh, the TFA Brigade. Now, I, I have to say there's a lot of, of Arsenal and Chelsea fans um, that, in the family that we are now a part of. Um, it's absolutely incredible, isn't it, the, the, the way that this has just taken off over the last year? Yeah, look, I, I think the, the, the football app and, and the, the fan base, because it's a global fan base, Pete, they buy in, they're, they're bought in already. So anything you could give them of good content, they're going to love it and they're going to lap it up. And it's brilliant to be a part of that community. You know, we, we think a lot about the community and the football coin and, and, and crypto and what's coming. So it's brilliant to be a part of it, for sure. And I was in there this morning just stoking it up a little bit ahead of the FA Cup and uh, it seemed to waken the Arsenal and Chelsea fans amongst them and then the Man United fans were getting involved. So uh, I sort of dipped my toe in this morning to say hello to them, shook them up a little bit. But again, it's what it's all about. It's the FA Cup and it's going to be a great weekend for everyone.